In this video, I'm going to solve this question. The management of a cookie manufacturing company does not want the variance of the net weight of these cookies in a pack to be more than 0.015 square grams. If the variance is not within this limit, the machine used for packaging is stopped and adjusted. A recently taken random sample of 25 packages from the production line gave a variance of 0.029 square grams. Based on this information, do you think the machine needs an adjustment? Use a 5% level of significance. And we also have to state the underlying assumption if any. First of all, let's understand the information that's given to us in the question. So we are dealing with a cookie manufacturing company. So let's say this is a cookie manufacturing company. And here I can draw some cookies. And because this is a company, so we are going to have many cookies in this company. So we have many cookies over here. There could be thousands of cookies. Okay. It's written over here that the management of this company does not want the variance of the net weight of these cookies to be more than 0.015 square grams. So let's say this is the person who is taking care of the management part and he does not want the variance of the net weight of these cookies to be more than this number. That means he wants the variance to be less than or equal to 0.015 square grams okay now note that we are talking about the variance of these cookies that are there in the company and this company is representing the entire population over here that means in the first two lines over here we are talking about the variance of the population and the notation that we generally use for variance of the population is sigma square okay so the management wants the sigma square, that is the population variance, to be less than or equal to 0.015 because it's clearly written over here that they do not want it to be more than 0.015 which implies that they want it to be less than or equal to 0.015. So if I start thinking of this statement as a claim, then what is the counterclaim related to the population variance that we can make over here? Well, the counterclaim could be that sigma square is greater than 0.015. Okay, so this is the information that's given to us in the first two lines of this question. Let's read further. If the variance is not within this limit, the machine used for packaging is stopped and adjusted. This implies that if sigma square is greater than 0.015, then the machine will be adjusted. And if sigma square is less than or equal to 0.015, then the machine is not adjusted. We are also given some sample information over here. So we have taken a random sample of 25 packages from the production line. That means from this company, we have taken a sample of 25 packages. So n is equal to 25. Note that this small n over here is sample size. So the size of the sample is 25. It's written that these 25 packages gave a variance of 0.029 square grams. That means the sample variance is equal to 0.029 square grams. I'm using the notation S square for the sample variance. Some of the textbooks also use the notation sigma hat square. So you can use whatever notation your textbook has. I'm going to work with S square as the notation for the sample variance. Okay. Based on this information, we have to check whether the machine needs an adjustment and the level of significance that we have to use, that is alpha, is equal to 5%, which I can also write as 0.05. So this is the information that's given to us. Now, because we are going to do hypothesis testing over here, so the first thing that we have to do is write the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So from the language of the question, we have these two claims on the population variance. The first claim is that sigma square is less than or equal to 0.015 and the second claim is sigma square is greater than 0.015. Now the question is that out of these two claims, which claim shall I write under the null hypothesis and which claim shall I write under the alternative hypothesis? Well, it's quite easy to figure this out. The claim that has an equal to sign, that is this claim, 
will be your null hypothesis and the claim that does not have an equal to sign that is this claim will be your alternative hypothesis okay so basically you have to choose the claim that has an equal to sign to be your null hypothesis and the other claim that you have will become your alternative hypothesis so in this case your null hypothesis is sigma square less than equal to 0 0.015 and the alternative hypothesis is sigma square greater than 0 0.015 now that we have the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis written over here, we have to figure out the test statistic that we are going to use to do hypothesis testing. Well, in this case, because we are testing claims on the population variance, the test statistic that we are going to use is chi-square. Note that when you are testing claims on population variance, then you cannot use t or z. Generally speaking, you use t or z when you are testing claims on the population mean. Over here, we are doing hypothesis testing on population variance, so we are going to work with chi-square. Now, one of the things that you need to understand before we proceed further is that to work with chi-square, you need to make sure that the population from which you have taken the sample, that is this population, is normally distributed. So you need to make sure that the population is normally distributed. That is, the sample that you have selected should come from a population which is normally distributed. Only then you can work with chi-square. And actually, this is the thing that they are asking you to state in the last line of the question. In the last line of the question, it's written, state the underlying assumption, if any. Well, the assumption is that the population from which we have taken this sample has to be normally distributed. Okay. Now, let's proceed further and complete this hypothesis testing procedure. So this is the information that's given in the question. Now to do the hypothesis testing using chi-square, we need to find two things. First, we need to find chi-square calculated. We use a formula to calculate this and that's why I'm calling it chi-square calculated because we are going to calculate this using a formula. And the other chi-square value that you need to know is chi-square critical. Chi-square critical is the value that we get from the table. Okay, we do not calculate this value. So these are the notations that I'm using. We need to work with two values of chi-square. One value I'm calling chi-square calculated because we are going to calculate it using a particular formula. And the other value is called chi-square critical. This is going to be the critical value and we get the critical values from the corresponding tables. Okay, let's find chi-square calculated first. The formula that we have to calculate this value is n minus 1 s square which is your sample variance divided by sigma square which is your population variance under the null hypothesis we are given all the information that we need to work with this formula we are given that n is equal to 25 so this becomes 25 minus 1 multiplied with s square which is 0 0.029 divided by sigma square note that by this sigma square we mean the value of sigma square that is there under the null hypothesis which is 0 0.015 so I can put 0 0.015 over here. Solving this, you will get that the calculated value of chi-square is 46.4. Okay, so this is the calculated value. Let's find the critical value. To find the critical value, first let's visualize that what is it that we are finding over here. So let me draw the chi-square distribution. Let's say that the distribution looks something like this. And we have zero over here. Note that this figure that I have drawn over here, this is just a sample figure. This is not the exact figure that we are going to have in this case. The reason being that the shape of the chi-square distribution varies depending on the degrees of freedom. In this case, n is equal to 25 and the chi-square has degrees of freedom n minus 1. So in this case, the degrees of freedom are 25 minus 1, that is 24. So these are the degrees of freedom that we have for this case. And the figure that I'm drawing over here, it's not necessarily for this degrees of freedom. This is just a sample figure that I'm drawing for the visualization purpose. Okay. So we have zero over here and all the values that you see to the right are the positive values because chi-square cannot take negative values. And we are given that alpha is 0 0.05. 
and we are also given that the alternative hypothesis is sigma square greater than 0.015. Note that because you have a greater than sign over here, your entire rejection region is going to be on the right hand side. That is, this is going to be a right tail test. So your entire rejection region is going to be over here on the right. So the probability corresponding to this region is 0.05, that is your value of alpha. If you struggle with these kind of things that how to figure out whether we are going to have a left tail, right tail or two tail, well, you are going to have a two tail test when you see a not equal to sign in the alternative hypothesis. You're going to have a right tail test when you see a greater than sign in the alternative hypothesis. And you're going to have a left tail test when you see a less than sign in the alternative hypothesis. So this means you're working with a two tail test. Okay. This means that you're working with a right tail test. And this means that you're working with a left tail test. Okay. To remember this, you can try to convert these signs into arrows. So if this is a greater than sign, if I try to convert this into an arrow, the arrow will point towards the right. So this is a right tail test. Over here, if I have a less than sign in the alternative hypothesis, and if I try to convert this into an arrow, then the arrow will point towards the left. Okay, so try to convert the sign into an arrow and if the arrow point towards the right, which will be the case if it's a greater than sign, then it's going to be a right tail test. And if the arrow point towards the left, which is going to be the case if you have a less than sign in the alternative hypothesis, then it's going to be a left tail test. In this particular question, we are not working with two tailed. We are not working with left tail. We are working with right tail. This is the reason the entire 5% region is on the right hand side. Now the critical value that I'm talking about is this value over here. So you have to find this value to the right of which you have 5% of the area. Okay. Now there are two things that you need to know if you want to find this value from the chi-square table. The first thing is degrees of freedom, which as written over here is n minus one in this case, that is equal to 24. And the second thing is the level of significance, which we are already given is 5% over here. So at the 5% level of significance with 24 degrees of freedom, if you take a look at the chi-square table, you will find that this value over here is 36.4151. I can also round off this value and instead of writing this, I can also write 36.42. Okay, so this is the critical value that we have. Note that I'm not teaching you how to take a look at the chi-square table in this video as we have already covered that in one of my other videos. I hope you can take a look at the chi-square table and figure out the critical value on your own for 5% level of significance and 24 degrees of freedom. So if you take a look at the chi-square table, you will find that this value is 36.42 approximately. Now after finding the calculated value and the critical value, all you have to do is compare these two values. So if you try to plot the calculated value on the same figure over here, then you will see that 46.4 will lie somewhere to the right of 36.42. So 46.4, which is our calculated value will be somewhere over here. So basically it is lying in the rejection region. So in this case, the chi-square calculated value is greater than the chi-square critical value. And as you can see, it is lying in the rejection region. That means we are going to reject the null hypothesis. So we are going to reject the null hypothesis. That means we are rejecting this hypothesis and we are going with this hypothesis. That is sigma square is greater than 0 0.015, which implies that the machine does need adjustment. So in your conclusion, you can write that we are rejecting the null hypothesis, which implies that the machine needs adjustment. Okay, and that's your conclusion. So this is all for this question.